Welcome back to the VoIP guys. Today we are talking about identity management. So here is with me Nico Gulden from Univention who is an expert about identity management. And please tell us first before we are talking about the details what is identity management and why do I need it? Uh, if you don't have identity management in your organization then you have to um, edit all your user identities uh, within the respective application. Mm -hmm. For example, in your groupware or in your CRM system, you have to create the accounts, maybe you have to reset or um, change the passwords after several days because of your po uh, password policy. And if you have an identity management, then you have one central system that um, has all the users with their username, their password, maybe email address or phone number, for example, and uh, you do the password change, for example, at one place and then all the other applications that are connected to the identity management will benefit from it and uh, have the user identities there. Okay, so there is not if a new employee, employee is there, not everybody says, who a new employee, 20 applications, I have to add a new user. If you have configured everything right, then you just do it once. Right. And it takes five minutes and everything is done, should be done. Yeah, yeah. Or well, you have the situation, um, an employee leaves the company mm -hmm. or is only there for a temporary time, mm -hmm. um, then you can set like an end date for uh, the account and then after that um, he, he's not able to log in anymore, for example, in the respective applications he is uh, allowed to before. Okay. Then we go directly into your software. Um, here we are logged into a UCS server. We did a setup, but it was easy and quick, five minute setup from the uh, ISO file, um, and we did nothing else. But I installed some test data in it to yeah, get the look and feel of the software. So here is the identity management, I click on users, and then I can do everything what's uh, regarding to, I uh, to identity management. And here is a list of users. Um, which we imp uh, imported as demo data and here is Bernd, our German employee and here is his whole identity. Um, so it's not only about his name and his password, about the authentication, but also about his email address, even his um, organization, if there are mul multiple organizations or offices or sites or something. Yeah, or department or room number, yeah. for example. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the whole identity is managed there yeah. for my uh, company. Then, what else? Um, this is not the only thing. I can also find something like devices, computers, and here I can find a lot of machines. What's that? Yeah, besides identity management, Univention Corporate Server is also a solution to operate and manage your whole IT infrastructure. What we saw here were several um, location servers uh, for the locations of the company mm -hmm. and uh, workstations, for example, uh, typically Windows uh, clients mm -hmm. that are part of the whole domain of the infrastructure. And the Windows clients, as soon as they are part of the domain, they are joined, then uh, Every employee who has an identity in mm -hmm. the system can log into that machine, for example. Sounds a little bit like Microsoft Active Directory. Yeah, it's basically it's the, it's the same concept. Yeah. And uh, Univention Corporate Server is also a solution uh, that is compatible to Active mm -hmm. Directory. You can even use it to replace your existing Active Directory environment or you can use the system and add it to your existing um, Active Directory environment. Um, for example, to um, yeah, operate third-party solutions. Mm -hmm. So it's like Microsoft, but open source. Right. That's the main difference, I think. Um, yeah, not the only one, but one of the, the, one basic, of the, the, one basic. Of the basic differences, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Then let's go further. Um, we also have a great feature, which is called the App Store. No, it's called the App Center. Sorry, not the App Store. That's from another company. Um, you can install here applications if you want to, like for our Moby Dick. Moby Dick is a software PBX system which also needs some users, the identity, uh, the whole identity, so the email address, the phone number and stuff. And we just could try to integrate it by hand or you can provide an application which does all the work for you as we did. We will um, show you later what's uh, about the Moby Dick application. But Nico, tell us something about the App Center in common. Yeah, the App Center, it's, um, it's the same principle you know from the mobile um, area with the um, marketplaces here, like from iOS or Android. Um, 
We also provide apps with the App Center, but the difference here is that those apps are um, server-based solutions. Mm -hmm. in, in most cases, they come integrated with the identity management or with the in infrastructure. It depends on the kind of the app. For mm -hmm. example, a group that typically needs an integration mm -hmm. with uh, the identity management. So normally you get a new game on a click. Here you get the whole CRM system or the whole yeah. ERP system on one click. Yeah, for the whole environment, so all the, all the um, employees or your users can mm -hmm. use it, right. That sounds great and the best thing you can test it for free and even mm -hmm. use it in production for free. Just go to your website, yeah. download the core edition and yeah. start. Right. Okay. Then let's see what the Moby Dick integration does. Um, we go back um, to our monitor. I installed the Moby Dick application and let's see what it does. I can go to the identity management, to user a user like Bernd. Bernd has now a new tab or a new option, which is Moby Dick. And I can say this user is enabled for Moby Dick. Why? Um, because maybe not every user should also use our telephony system. Some cases maybe, um, uh, but this one should. You could do this on every single record if you want to. Go to the next user, go to the next user, or you can do it in batch mode. So it did 100 users at once. Um, for us, it's enough to do it like this. And I want a second user, that one. And she's also um, Moby Dick enabled, as you can see here. Um, and that's it for the first step. So you need to tell this user, that user, the other user, should use Moby Dick. This is step one. Step two is um, you need a machine account. Um, that's in common if two machines want to talk to each other, then they should know from each other mm -hmm. because of security mm -hmm. reasons. So I have to create a new machine account. And, and this step is only to, uh, needs only to be done once. Once, yes. I go to devices, computers, I add a new computer which is basically a Linux computer. That's because Moby Dick is based on Linux. Then I provide a name, which is Moby Dick. Create computer. He provides me the mask a second time just to add the next computer, but I only want one. I can open it. I can click on advanced settings and Another important thing is to provide a password. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Don't try this at home. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Save it. So that's all I have to do in the new engine server to provide all the users also to Moby Dick. Here you can see Moby Dick, our telephony software. Here's only the administrator as user account listed. Now I go to advanced connector and add a new connector profile for my UCS server. Here, the only thing I have to know and understand in LDAP is I have to provide the base DN. This can differ from machine to machine. Um, you choose a domain, like you can see here, I have chosen barbecue.pascom.net. So the base DN is DC is barbecue, DC is pascom, DC is net. So this is the only thing you have to know about LDAP and how the base DN is defined. Then I have to provide the username and my secret password, save. Then I can test it. I can see the import is running. And now here, luckily, we can find those two users. And they have also a phone number, all the data they need. And then I say, import it, yes. And this is only the one part, we are importing the users so we know their names for the phone books and stuff. The second part is the authentication. This is done automatically. So if a user tries to authenticate, Moby Dick does not store any password any longer. We, all, uh, we um, authenticate in any case directly to UCS. You can see this here. If I start the Moby Dick client, 
He used Bernd as a user, our password, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and that's it. So I have never to change my password again in Moby Dick, only in UCS. In UCS, I do not go to the web page we've seen and change it there because it would be not very convenient for the users. How can a user change his password now? Yeah, for example, he um, logs into his Windows client and changes his password there. And then it's changed basically in UCS and yeah. to every connected application. Yes. So it's great and I can enforce my password policies. Yes. Very easy. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's it from our side. Uh, thank you for watching and see you next time.